the devil's in the details. This is the minimalist take on the dress watch from a 268 years old watchmaker, Vacheron Constantin. It celebrates modesty and luxury. My first Holy Trinity Grail piece from my favorite Swiss Maison. Hey folks, I'm Em. Welcome back. Let's get this clear straight from the start. This is a patrimony in name and price, costing a whopping £27,000. We are exiting the realm of watches that you can just walk into a store and expect it to be given to you. But let's set the stage first. In 1755, in Geneva, a young Jean-Marc Vacheron, back then just 24 years old, establishes his watch company. And then in the 19th century, François Constantin, a businessman, partners with the Vacheron family, thus birthing Vacheron Constantin as we know it today. The union became official in 1819, and since then they became masters of specific crafts like enameling, mini repeaters, engraving. They hold record with the most complicated pocket watch in the world, with, I think, up most of 54 complications, which is insane. This is my favorite Swiss Maison, due to the elegance in their pieces, expertise in very exotic complication, and the history it carries. Another thing that sets Vacheron Constantin apart is their Le Cabinotier uh, division. It's effectively a world-leading custom slash extravagant orders division and they make some of the most absurd and beautiful pieces. For example, the world's most complicated pocket watch that they created comes from a custom order for Le Cabinotier. VC has also been renowned through the years um, for being part of the Holy Trinity of watchmakers. The Holy Trinity consists of uh, Patek Philippe, Audemars Piguet and Vacheron Constantin and is effectively considered to be the best trio of Swiss watchmakers through history. Of course, there's plenty of other maisons that uh, people tend to include in the Holy Trinity, re replacing one of those brands. However, there is a reason why VC got in there in the first place. However, after the quartz crisis in 1996, Vacheron was acquired by the Richemont Group, which is why a lot of people knock them down nowadays, but I don't understand why. This has been for a while one of my grail watches in the um, rose gold and blue dial combination. I love the understated look of it. It is a great stealth flex watch. It's something that you do for yourself, not expecting many people to know what you're wearing. You will know what it is, which is one of the reasons I fell in love with it. First of all, I wanted the self-winding because of the added second complication and the date. It helps a lot when making the watch wearable in everyday situations without looking out of place. I've been lucky with this watch. It's not one of the easiest to get from BC. Had it in my grails list since I saw it for the first time. And that was a few years ago, I think, 2019 or 2020. Then while inquiring for my reverso at my AD, shout out Andrew if you see this, went into the back and after a while came out with two Vacheron which I think were uh, refused allocations. One was a traditional tourbillon and then this one. My heart dropped, especially after seeing it in the flesh and trying it on. I instantly fell in love with it and my fate was sealed. I'm the first owner and now had it for a year and I've worn it a lot. So it now has all the little scratches it earned. From a distance, this doesn't scream expensive at all. That is, until you start paying attention to the details. It comes in a beautiful shade of pink gold. And the dial has this beautiful deep blue sun ray finish, which changes completely color depending on the lighting situation. You can get lost in the details. Every detail on the dial is fully applied in pink gold, from the hour markers to the minute ones. Long and thin sword hands complete the look of the watch with a matching blue date window down at six o'clock. This is the 36 millimeter, by the way. I've tried the, some of the 40 millimeters from Vacheron and for this type of model, I think that they would look definitely too big on my wrist. I cannot stress enough how much the dial color changes depending on the lighting conditions. I'm hoping I'm being able to convey that through the video. Both the case and the movement are stamped with the Geneva seal, which is a mark of excellence in Swiss watchmaking. 
The movement is a Vacheron 2450 Q6-3. It's a self-winding movement featuring hours, minutes, seconds and a date window. When flipping the watch over, you definitely start getting a feel of the craftsmanship of the master's watchmaker at Vacheron. The movement is beautifully finished and done. Sporting a Maltese cross self-winding rotor, which I think looks incredible. And it has an acceptable power reserve of about a couple of days. The movement comes with a two-step crown, which adjusts the time in its second position while moving the date in its first. The movement is full of fantastic homemade finishes. There is guilloche on the bridges and perlage finishing everywhere else, along with polished bevels everywhere. The rotor, which is also in pink gold, has multiple finishes too, including a lovely hammered section. I love the detail of the Maltese cross, and the rotor is among the smoothest I felt, and a joy to play with. I spend way too much time looking at it with a loop that I'm comfortable admitting to you folks. The watch comes with a color matched and absolutely beautiful large grain alligator strap. I've also ordered a different strap for it, I wanted to see uh, if I could make it a bit sportier uh, with a change of strap, so I'm really looking forward to go and pick it up and see how it looks. I'll show you folks as soon as I get it. I need to spend one second talking about the box of this thing. It's polished, high quality wood, with a very elegant pattern. Contains the watch, a generic multi-movement manual, and it includes the paper in their little card holder. This is what I would consider a beautiful box. How does it wear? For being a dress watch at heart, I really think this specific model of the patrimony lends to be worn in multiple situations not only on a, a very elegant suit and tie but for all the time i owned it i always worn it more with a casual outfit and it works perfectly well i think it's a lot because of the 300 design plus the date if i had picked the minute and hour only that would have probably screamed a bit more dress i would not have guessed for it to be this versatile all in all, it's a beautiful watch. I'd say deserving to be part of your patrimony as well, as it's a perfect piece to pass on to the next generations to cherish. Like most luxury watches, this isn't for everyone. It's a very specific and a very expensive watch. I can see a lot of people going for very different options when they have the possibility to spend those numbers on a watch. Especially in today's watch industry, which punishes dress watch choices in favor of bulkier and sportier models. Wearing one of these won't fit a lot of people's tastes and needs. But for the ones who are looking for beauty and modesty and appreciate the strength of minimalism, I can only strongly recommend you try on a patrimony. As I mentioned earlier, people still tend to snob Vacheron a little bit. And the main reason I hear is often because of the Richmond group. But I don't hear them complaining about Alang and Zune, for example. By the way, have you ever wondered how does warranty and repairs work on one of these high-end timepieces? <laughs> I wonder if I'll ever need it in my lifetime. Food for thought. <gasps>